much. Pretty good. Pretty good. So while politicians shipped away our jobs, shed our sovereignty, surrendered our dignity, and saddled our nation in one foreign debacle after another. And we're still here, he just said. We're still here, you better believe it. And we're here stronger than ever before we're here. But all of that ended the day that I took the oath of office, the American people are in charge of their country again. We cut a record number of job-killing regulations that were strangling our country. We cut more regulations in two and a half years than any other president in their full terms. Four years, eight years, or in one case, more than that, cut more than anybody. To get relief to working families, we passed the largest package of tax cuts and tax reforms in the history of our country. You're making a lot more money. You're making a lot more money, and you see it, and you know it because you see it in your paycheck every week. We ended last administration's cruel war on American energy, and we are delivering a policy of American energy independence like you've never seen before. And in fact, if you look at the streets where we're having all of the problems, you look at the streets, number one, they're not touching our ships, they're not playing with our ships. They're taking them from this country, from that country, from that country. But you know what? Very importantly, we have very few ships going there anymore because we don't need that oil and gas. And the United States is now the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere in the world. to abolish the American oil, coal, and natural gas industries that are fueling our economic boom. Can you imagine this? We're sitting on great wealth. They want to take it away from us. And the alternatives don't have the power. They don't have the power. They want wind. Wind. Wind is so, oh, so beautiful. As long as you don't have to stare at a windmill and your house goes down in value like to nothing. Steve, if you had a windmill anywhere near your house, you would have gotten one-third the price you got, Steve. That's true, by the way. That's true. Steve's too smart to let that happen. We won't let them take it away from you. We are reversing decades of calamitous trade policies that shattered New Hampshire and your factories. They shattered your communities and they shattered American power and American prestige all around the globe. New Hampshire lost one in four manufacturing jobs following NAFTA and China's entrance into the World Trade Organization, two of the worst deals ever in the history of our world, not just our country. Election after election, politicians came to your state pretending to have the courage to stand up for the American worker. Then they went to Washington and let other countries push them around and special interests buy them off and steal your jobs and take your companies. That's what happened. Me, I don't care about their campaign contributions. It doesn't matter to me, folks. We want to do a job. We want to do a great job. And we're setting records. And you know who's sending us the money? The small donors. Mm -hmm. We have big donors, but we have small donors are sending us the money for the election. Pretty amazing. That's not supposed to happen to a Republican, but it's happening to this republic, and it's happening to you.
Their politicians made was broken. Every hope was dashed. And every promise turned into a total betrayal of New Hampshire and of our country. But in this administration, we have something those sellout politicians could only dream of. It's called strength and commitment. We don't play games. Yes. We don't play games. After years and years of building up other countries, we are finally building up our country, standing up for our jobs, our workers, and standing up for our dignity. The forgotten men and women of America will never, ever be forgotten again. You were forgotten. The last administration with Sleepy Joe and Obama tried to ram through one of the worst trade deals ever negotiated, worse than NAFTA, Worse than WTO, it was called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It would have been a disaster. TPP would have gutted the American auto industry. It would have been in shambles. Our auto industry is coming back so strong. Would have gutted, would have destroyed the industry. But in my first week in office, I proudly withdrew the United States from that job-destroying catastrophe. And we are imposing beautiful, well-placed tariffs, money comes in, on foreign countries that cheat our workers, steal our jobs, and break all the rules. I'm sorry. And by the way, they've been changing and charging tariffs on us for years. We have countries that charge us 100%, 200%. Wow. 297% in the case of Canada wow. with your farm products. You're not going to stand for it. And man, did we turn things around. And we've just started. If companies don't want to pay a tariff, I have one simple solution. Come make your product in America. Come make your product in New Hampshire. Zero tariffs. Zero. Zero. No tariffs. Together we're restoring this nation's industrial mind. And we are doing it with American iron, American aluminum and American steel. We're doing steel. Steel industry is hot. The steel, and they were dumping steel all over. They were destroying our companies. U.S. Steel now, all of them, they're all expanding. The steel industry is back. It's doing great. We're opening up mines in Minnesota, the great state of Minnesota. They have magnificent mines that have the best iron ore in the world. And President Obama closed them down. Maybe we can get Representative Omar from Minnesota to open it up, but I don't think so. She'll open them up. I don't think so. Representative Omar, that's another one. We're replacing NAFTA with a brand new USMCA. That's Mexico and Canada. Great deal. The USMCA will create countless jobs for farmers, manufacturers all across the state. We need Congress to pass the USMCA immediately. We'll make it a bipartisan deal. We don't even want credit. The unions benefit. The non-unions benefit. Everybody benefits. It brings it back to fairness, and it makes it very hard for our companies to leave our countries, go to Mexico or Canada, 
We lose all our jobs, we lose all our taxes, we end up with empty factories and plants. It makes it almost impossible. We're not going to have that. That was my one rule that I had to have. It's going to be very, very hard for companies to do that. I've also taken the toughest ever action to stand up to China's chronic trade abuses. Earlier this month, the U.S. government officially labeled China for the first time ever a currency manipulator, yep. another promise kept. While others allowed China to freely loot the U.S. economy, $500 billion a year, not million, not million, billion, with a B. We've made it clear that the theft of American jobs and American wealth over. is over. Good. Yet, today, the Wall Street Journal editorial board and some others continue to publish foolish articles that demonstrate that they understand nothing. nothing about trade or business. Nothing. They advocate only economic surrender. They actually say, go to China, take off the tariffs, make a deal. I lose all the cards we take off the tariffs. We don't have any cards. Think of it. They say, go to Europe. By the way, the European Union is worse than China. Just smaller. It treats us horribly. Barriers, tariffs, taxes. And we let them come in. It's worse than China. Many of us come from there. I do. That's what it's got going. That's about it. They treat us really badly. And many others, many, many others. India tariffs us probably higher than any nation anywhere in the world. We have tariffs of 100% on products and much more than that. India. So we're working on all of them. I called Prime Minister Modi. I said, Mr. Prime Minister, not fair. We've got to change. We've got to change. got to change. And we're talking to them very seriously. We're talking to a lot of places. But when the Wall Street Journal comes out and they say, no, no, take the tariffs off. Go and talk to China. They've been trying to talk to them for 25 years. But actually, you know what? They really haven't. The fact is, the leaders that were in my position, they didn't do a damn thing. They didn't talk. They didn't talk. Past leaders followed the terrible advice of these editorial boards that are frankly totally inexperienced in business, I guess. And our industries were utterly decimated. Globalism enriches foreign countries at our expense. Globalism. That's right. That's right. I love our country. I'm the president of the United States of America. That's right. The president of the world. That's America will never bow to a foreign nation like we were for so many years. As we restore our prosperity, we are also restoring public safety. We are fighting to reduce violent crime. You see so much that over the last 25 years,